As promised, uh, City Councilman Massengale is our guest. Uh, well, and good morning. Good morning. Uh, well, it's, it wasn't the uh, the long one le- that we had last week. Well, uh, you, you got I, home at a I decent got, time. I got home yesterday, <laughs> not this morning. <laughs> I guess it was Griffiths that was here last oh, week. Oh, I, I know. Said, he said it uh, went until, what, 1 o'clock in the morning? Yeah, he was telling me. He's like, I, I, I got to be on, on the radio in the morning. I may just go uh, sleep in my car in their parking lot. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Well, a uh, lot to talk about. Uh, I think in, uh, you, you were saying here off mic that the Expo zoning case got a lot of talk last night. Yeah. As of you, input from citizens. As usual, a very polarizing um, uh, issue on our agenda last night. Um, keep in mind, you know, I think a lot of people's perception was that the city council was making the decision on where the, where the Expo Center would be located. Well, it's probably – Proper to remind everybody, this is a county project, and this was a zone case, and we hear lots of zone cases every time. Uh, there's a process for zoning. It goes to the Planning and Zoning Commission, and if passed there, it ru- goes up the flagpole to the city council. This was a second reading of that zone case. It passed uh, the first reading, four to three. Uh, there was an amendment on the dais last night to uh, modify the proposed zoning. The original request was IHC, which was um, it, Interstate Highway Commercial, uh, which is a very broad zone, uh, zone, and it allows many industrial uses. And so the proposal on the dais was actually we modified the position of the Expo Center, moved it a little more south, a little more east, and left it R1 uh, residential, which is what it is today, and then we approved a special use permit for an arena and an arena only uh, on that parcel. Um, that specific use permit is uh, expires in 30 months. They are required to pull a building permit within 30 months to, to um, uh, take advantage of that decision last night. So uh, the big thing or the positive thing about that is that if they want to do anything else with the property or add anything else to the property, they'll have to come back to the city and make sure that it's going to be within uh, the use. You're that's correct. Needed. That's correct, Matt. Um, that, with the exception of R one, right? right. Um, that that would give the council control of uh, what might be going in there. And I can only imagine. You know, I don't know. You know, I think people have visions of uh, restaurants and hotels and some other things that might go in there. But with the way this is set up, it would give the council control of what goes in there. Yeah. Well, what was the, what was the, what were most of the citizens upset about? They, they didn't want, I guess, some of them didn't want you to rezone it where they could, where they could actually uh, build the facility there. Yeah, the um, most of the argument was be what you'd call NIMBY, which is an acronym for not in my backyard. In other words, I'm I'm always for development, but not not, not in my backyard, you know. And um, uh, the Concerns were uh, traffic, uh, access to emergency services, uh, smells, trash, possible abuse of alcohol. Um, This case, I don't know that I've ever had a NIMBY case where the neighborhood was so far away or as far away as this one was. Um, You know, if if there were – Any event center is going to have traffic. I think about United Supermarkets Arena, and I would, and it's more or less three times the size of the proposed Uh attendance at this facility. If we have a a situation, wouldn't you think like the Tech Terrace neighborhood would complain about some of those same things? They're much closer than uh, Hillcrest would be to the Expo Center. Uh, We heard from. Public works, traffic uh, last night, uh, our sh- the capacity of those streets, which are have far greater capacity than what is utilized today. Uh, we heard from our police department as to uh, traffic control and safety concerns. Uh, we heard from Lubbock Fire Rescue on access to emergency uh, services, and I think we all felt good about that. Um, this uh, ended up passing last night five to two, rather than the the split four three that you saw uh, two weeks ago. Yeah, well, that's good. Mm-hmm. Um, 
so uh, that's a done deal. And now the, you kick the can back to the county, and uh, they have a green light to go. Yeah, it's a we we what we got done last night was the approved zoning. It's still up to them. I mean, you know, they can do a variety of things at this point. We can't control how they handle them the, the project from here on out. But it is their intention to move forward and um, build the project. Yeah. Uh, we want to talk about the. Uh, you can't go more than five minutes to not talk about the coronavirus. The what? The coronavirus. <laughs> Have you not heard of it? <laughs> the coronavirus. Um, of course, the, is uh, they've announced that uh, the city health department will have a meeting or have a uh, an announcement. I guess at uh, three o'clock today. Do you you know what's up with that? Yeah, there, there'll be. Uh, this is just an update. I, I don't know that there's any changes from the last time. We communicated with the public, and that's just our intent to con- continue to communicate um, with the public on the I, I noticed that y'all did not close down the KISS concert last night. No, we did not. Okay. And I understand it was well attended. I would have loved to have been there if the <laughs> council meeting would have gotten out earlier. <laughs> uh, well, is there uh, is this something that the city's talking about? I mean, uh, it's we have other cities that uh, are shutting down uh, events. Public gatherings. And there's a lot of talk about. Absolutely, we we are talking about it. We monitor it daily. City manager monitors it daily. Um, our uh, director of health monitors it daily, and they're in touch with I know state and uh, federal officials monitoring. Um, you know, we we don't have any information to do anything other than what we're doing right now. Yeah. Well, of course, I know Texas Tech. Doctor Skubnik has canceled a bunch of spring break activities. International, uh, a bunch of, international. Yeah, yeah I was going to say, and one of them was a trip to Italy. So, yeah. and Italy shut down as a country. You, right could, now. you couldn't pay me to go to Italy right now. But, yeah, yeah. You know, but I, I, but, but, there, but Texas Tech, being of course here in Lubbock, uh, we have a, a lot more large gatherings than another city our size in mm-hmm. many cases. Uh, so it's probably an issue that's going to have to be addressed at one point or another. Sure. If if things change, I think we would just still encourage citizens to uh, take precautions and do the things that you've heard recommended, which is mainly cleaning your hands um, properly and um, go about their day. Yep. All right. It is 7.15 and uh, a quick break and we'll be back with more from uh, Councilman Massengill after this. And we are back. Uh, we have uh, with us this morning in the studio Councilman Bass and Gail uh, talking about uh, or telling us and informing us about the city council meeting last night. We have a texter this morning, and I should remind everyone our text lines are open, 806-680-2790. If you have a question for the councilman, uh, please shoot us a text, and we'll be glad to ask it. We have a texter that says, sorry if it hasn't been brought up yet, but when will Citizens Tower open? And uh, is it on budget? Well, the great part to report on Citizens Tower, it it is on budget. Uh, It is in its ninth hour. I mean, we are so close on it. If you've driven by, the construction fencing is down. Most of the site work is uh, complete out in front, uh, sidewalks, those types of things. Um, Our elevator inspections, which we've talked about on this show before, um, we're supposed to occur this week. I haven't heard anything, so I hope no, no news is good news. Uh, we're f- putting the finishing touches on connecting data to the building. The elevators and the data were were large items for us. Um, we're able to start the life safety tests at this point. So um, I've gotten over giving anybody a date, but um, you know the project has been delayed, and that has been disappointing to us. Uh, but we will begin moving in soon. Well, as big a project as that was, there's no, uh, it's frequently delayed yeah, with, with all the moving parts involved yeah. in that. I always call it this old house on steroids, but um, it's a beautiful building, it's something that will serve this city for many, many, many years, and uh, we'll be excited to have you in it and show you around. Well, we have a texture that says, what about the state school? I understand there's a petition going around claiming the school will be adversely affected by the Expo Center. There were petitions submitted throughout the zoning process for the Expo. There there were points brought up by the, the neighborhood that um, uh, there was a 
the expo would create a dangerous situation um, being placed adjacent to the state school. Um, there's always going to be danger associated with traffic congestion, regardless of where you're at. I understand the state school has recently installed a new gate and fencing system. I think the expo is willing to work with the state school in whatever manner they can uh, to um, maintain safety. And I think there was a lot of discussion last night as it applied to the state school about programs between the expo center, um, the value of animals um, to those that are mentally disabled and um, the benefits that they would have, the animal therapy. And I think the expo is willing to work with them on that. Positive versus negative. Yeah. 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 But that was a concern. I, you know, here would be my point on, on, on the state school, and I understand that, and I, I don't mean to diminish their concern, but uh, if there was legitimate concern, I felt like the state school should have been at the meeting and represented themselves. Uh, we have another texture that is uh, concerned about speeders, and I've, I've, I've been very, very surprised at this. Anytime that we mention traffic, there, there's a, a, a tremendous amount of uh, – uh, interest out there, at least from our audience, because we'll just get tons of texts regarding uh, bad drivers in Lubbock and particularly about speeders. Uh, do you have any input on that from so, the uh, new police chief? Yesterday in our work session, we got an update on crime statistics from Chief Mitchell. We spent a lot of time on speeding. And we were looking at the statistics related to fatalities. I can't remember if we've talked about that on our show or not, I believe it was our fatality rate had increased. Uh, it was at 155% compared from uh, 2018 to 2019. I think we had 52 fatalities. That's a lot. That's too much for, for our community. And so, Chief no, That's inside the city limits. Yes. I wow. believe 32 of those were vehicular, 12 were pedestrian, and – Seven were motorcycles. I don't know if my math adds up there. That's pretty pretty close. Um, Chief Mitchell has um, made a point to work on speed control. His point is changing behaviors. You know, we live in a world today where, you know, everyone's distracted. And, and that's exactly uh, what the chief said on this yeah, show. And, and, and I'll make this point today. Put your phone down. And we all see drivers every day with their phone in their ear, or they're trying to text while they're driving. Mm -hmm. And that's what – this isn't all about that, but it's there's a lot that's about that. And, you know, I see people in newer model cars that I'm sure has Bluetooth technology that hasn't taken the time, and they've still got a phone stuck in their ear. Take your time. Use the technology. Put your phone down. It's pretty simple. Mm -hmm. Distractive driving kills. And I think the way we look at it and the way the chief looks at it is those – those fatalities that we we discussed yesterday were not ne were not necessary, and um, and we can do better. Mm. So I don't know if you have the numbers. One of the things that I've been wanting to get information on is they keep talking about how many uh, people they've pulled over for speeding, and we get this on the news. They've pulled over, uh, over seven hundred people now for speeding. How does that compare to last year at this time of how many people they pulled over? I mean, are we seeing a huge uptick in people being pulled over for speeding, or is it uh, about the same? I mean, uh, it's, it's a good question. I don't know. I don't have the numbers on that. But my guess is with this recent effort that Chief Mitchell has uh, deployed that the numbers are up. Um, again, we have uh, – City Councilman Massengill with us, uh, and we'll uh, we'll remind you that our text lines are open. If you have a question for the councilman, eight zero six six eight zero two seven nine is the number. Coming up here on seven twenty nine, and uh, Dave and Matt in the morning on KFYL will return with more after this. And we are back here on KFYL mornings. Dave King, Matt Martin at seven thirty five a.m. Again, uh, City Councilman Massengill is with us live and uh, reporting on last night's City Council meeting. And one of the things we wanted to talk about are impact fees. Which this were not talked about last night at the meeting. That's correct. <laughs> that well, wasn't. that's not true. We, no. it, it, we had an impact. We set uh, the first hearing mm -hmm. for impact fees. We'll, um, 
will, will be April 14th. Okay. So y'all, <laughs> as far as doing a hearing or whatever, is this, this isn't about doing impact fees. This is about looking into what would be feasible. Yeah. So j- just to uh, remind your listeners, impact fees are a method of development, especially in fast growth communities, to keep up with the infrastructure related to new development, specifically roads, water, and, and sewer. Well, but from the aspect of roads, uh, in the development itself, the developers usually pave all the roads, roads and have the roads ready to go. City just has to attach to them. Yeah. And, and, but sometimes and it, they have to expand roads, for example, yeah. Milwaukee or something like that. Well, um, there in, in, in the way that we do it now, they don't all build all the roads, okay? And I'll give you an example. Look at um, 114th from Indiana to Slide. Mm-hmm. And think about all the big, nice developments that run along 114th. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Is 114th built out the way it should be? Well, no, but that I guess that was my no, point. No, that's the point. No, but that, I'm saying that point. that is my point is that road right there is the city's responsibility. But once you get into the development itself, the developers have already built the roads. Well, and, and keep in mind, even go, a, before you go any further, I think well, what we need to explain to the audience, probably a lot of them don't know what we're talking about as far as an impact yeah. fee. So, so uh, can, can you define it for the audience? So, so what we're studying, again, nothing's been approved or acted upon, is impact fees, which would be a fee assessed to the developer, um, a fee assessed at the time the, pro- the property is platted, and remitted by the builder when the building permit is pulled for the property. This and, is commercial and residential? Yes. And that fee could be variable depending on what location you are or where you're building. So there would be a formula depending on at what point in time where you were going to build. For example, if it was in up against Loop 88 on raw farmland, the, the impact fee would be higher. But if you were doing infill inside the loop and that you were doing a development where there was some infrastructure already there, the formula would pull that impact okay. fee down. And, and this would is be to less. pay the city of Lubbock to put the infrastructure in, the roads that would connect to yeah, the that city property, would the still sewer, share. the water, yeah. electricity. Yeah, that's correct. It's not electricity. It would be roads and collectors or, or any road that would, would – would would service that development and water and sewer no, utilities yeah yeah well uh, you know here here's the thing that i i don't i don't guess i follow we we have never done it that way the city has always uh just i, I guess you have you have the money and you've always done it and but here we don't always have the money that's the problem but here's the thing once this seems to be good for the city because once the uh, development is is done. Look at all the new tax revenue that's mm-hmm. coming in. So, in the impact fees are an instrument designed by the state legislature to for cities with faster growth to be able to keep up with the infrastructure. Um, the, the remember the taxes that the property taxes don't pay for. Uh, Property taxes pay for roads, but they don't pay for water and sewer. Rate payers pay the, – those are enterprise funds. But the tax base increase doesn't keep up with what the needs – when you're in a fast growth situation like we are right now. And so you look for – and this is widely used across the state of Texas, and they do it all different ways. And, and that's why the council has some latitude here to decide what's too high or what what, what is tolerable and and – and, you know, the downside of this, and this is everybody's argument, is it's going to raise house prices. And it has, you know, on a lower-priced pro- home, it has a bigger effect than it does on, say, a five hundred, six hundred, seven hundred thousand dollar $600,000, $700,000 home. So that's the argument ag- against it. Yeah. Well, but the other thing is that you'll be getting taxes off that uh, raise in value of the home. Yeah, but there's no correlation that that increase in taxes would pay for the infrastructure you need. Well, but I, I guess my point is that uh, not not that part, but let's say you get an impact fee. That impact fee is going to be turned around on the house, uh, the the property 
Mm-hmm. That that's where well, selling a house at a higher amount is what raises the values of houses, right. which raises the tax value. So it's kind of like double dipping but remember, for the city. Let's keep, go back and look at. what So are our, these a foregone conclusion? Um, well, let me because it seems well, like well, that. Well, let me, they let me are. say one thing before we go to that point. Um, keep in mind your property taxes. What's what's the majority of your property tax go for? Schools. Okay, majority of the the property tax the city collects. What does it okay. go for? Uh, roads, public safety. Pub- okay, it's kind of like the federal government. Was most of our our taxes we send to the federal government pay for the military? Okay, so most of our property tax goes for public safety. So don't lose sight of the fact that as we grow and add those residents and those homes, you've got to keep them safe. You've got to um, make sure they. Um, you know, you you got animal services. You got all the all the things that go that come out of the general fund that that the property taxes move into, are what most of those dollars go for. So there's you know, to, we don't have enough. We, you know, we've made a point to maintain streets with cash, and we still don't have enough just to maintain the streets to the, to the level we want to. Now, to your other conclu- question, is this a foregone conclusion? This is a product of the comprehensive land use plan. In 2016, in the first budget that um, I saw as a councilman, I made a budget amendment to go ahead and fund and uh, make sure that we updated our comprehensive land use plan, which hadn't been updated in over 30 years. We've been talking about impact fees in that plan now for over two years. Mm -hmm. So none of these are surprises. That group was a, a group led by citizens that made the recommendation that impact fees is what would be the most effective use for deve- of development uh, for infrastructure in our city. At this point, what we're doing is we're following the letter of the law to go through all the steps the state requires before the council makes a decision on impact fees. Okay. Let's take a quick break, and we'll come back and talk more of that because we have some we have some textures who have input and have a and have an idea. Again, our text lines are open if you'd like to let us know what's on your mind. 806-680-2790. Back with more in a moment. And we're back. Uh, Dave and Matt here on KFYO with uh, Councilman Bassett Gill. Uh, let's see. We have a texture that says uh, most of the federal taxes go to Medicare and Medicaid and other entitlements by far, not the military. Well, that... Well, he, they're right, but a, a huge chunk still goes to million. Huge piece was, of our federal budget. I think our, our budget this year is seven hundred million. Billion. I, bet, I bet it's billion. a lot more than that. Seven hundred billion. Seven hundred fifty billion. Something yeah, like that. almost a trillion dollars. Yeah, which is about well, one f- a quarter of our budget. Yeah, one like fifth, that. somewhere in there. Um, let's see what resource recourse do citizens have to impact fees. Well, um, the only people that would be um, – that might have any recourse and there will be a, a method of appeal would be the builder. Yeah. Another one says uh, – Texture says, uh, once you start the impact fee and if growth slows, are you going to repeal it? I believe the uh, council has latitude to adjust that, yes. says, I don't have a question. I just want the councilman to time the lights. <laughs> traffic lights <laughs> are, the lights are timed and uh, uh, they work quite well in my opinion most of the time it just depends on what your timing is into the predetermined timing sequence I guess mm-hmm. but those are all centrally controlled and yes there's a computer somewhere well you also have to understand that if it's working perfectly going one direction it's not going to work as well going the yeah. other direction and so they have to time it in a way where you still hit a couple of lights in there and both ways get the best you know you don't the best all you, all you have to do is go to a couple other communities in Texas and then come back Austin. to Lubbock. <laughs> yeah, I was there last week and realize how lucky we are to have the traffic system we do here in yeah. Lubbock. Well you know we have a lot of textures they they get to they get to spout off you know, that, that's it, their right. It, that, it, that's, so that's I don't know no if this problem. is really a question, but it's, hey. uh, we'll give them the opportunity. Infrastructure. My neighborhood was annexed in the 50s. Our roads in the 40 years that I've lived there have deteriorated to alleyways. Uh, 
as they improved MLK from 82nd to the loop. They backed up the drainage from our neighborhood, sickening. Fix what we already have and what the city screwed up. <laughs> I doubt you hadn't been on the council that long, so well, you can't take <laughs> annexed areas. Uh, when when we uh, have annexed areas from the county into the city, the county has different standards for roadways than we do, and there are a tremendous amount of roads that need to be rebuilt. Uh, I believe our list of uh, roads to be rebuilt at this point in time is totals out of, at about six hundred million dollars. We can't. We don't. That's not. That's not practical for us right now. And so, um, you know, we our MPO works very hard. It's led by um, Mayor Pro Tem Griffith, and that's uh, a, a group from the county. And uh, I, I believe Wolfers even represented on there, and they make decisions on. Um, funds other than local funds uh on what our street priorities are and they're everyone's aware of all the streets that need to be fixed there's a limited amount of resources and um you know they they make they prioritize those and we do what we can with what we have yeah. what do we got oh that that's gonna wrap it up then um Again, so glad that you made it out this morning. It's been interesting. A lot of new information that I've learned. I guess we'll see you back in a couple of weeks. Be happy to be here. Oh, yeah, right. I am back on in a couple of weeks, aren't I? Lucky y'all. Am I? I'm on. Yeah, I think so. Okay. Dave and Matt in the morning.